What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I was going to show you an update on my Ludicia disc color as well as also show you how I repot it. Now, first off, I wanted to say, uh, if you do feel like supporting my channel in any kind of way, please check the link in the description box below for the Patreon. Uh, and if you don't have the monetary means to actually support it that way, please feel free to share my videos with any friends or family members uh, who love plants and like to learn about them also. Now, so uh, this is the update video on this plant. Uh, if you wanted to see uh, what it looked like in its former glory, and all of its beautiful flowers. Uh, check out the previous video I did uh, on the care for this plant. Um, I had him in a north orientated window uh, and you can tell that he is kind of stretched out, been a little idolated, uh, and didn't really get a whole bunch of uh, light that he does like. Now I did a lot of research on this plant and I found uh, a lot of kind of various different kind of uh, info on it. Some say that uh, they kind of do like sunlight, uh, mostly just shade. Uh, others will say that they're very heavy drinkers. Some will say that they're pretty moderate. Some will say not really much at all. Uh, some will say they do enjoy some humidity. Some will say they love it a lot. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, info out on this plant. Uh, but um, unfortunately, what I found wasn't the best info for this plant at all. And what I've come to learn, um, I had him in that window, uh, so I decided to move him under some LEDs. Uh, and that really helped him out a lot, and you can tell the newer, kind of smaller areas of the plant are starting to pop up around there, uh, especially around the edge. This plant doesn't really get too tall. It mainly just kind of gets a little wide. Um, so the LEDs really helped him out and kind of uh, brought out more of his beautiful kind of uh, lines. Uh, as you can tell, the leaves are a very, very deep, dark green. They look almost kind of black, and that's what given it the name, or the common name, of the black jewel orchid. Um, and if you know how to take care of one of these, uh, like if you can take care of a begonia inside your home, you should definitely be able to take care of one of these guys here. So I wanted to try something a little different. I have it's him in his original pot that he came in, uh, and it's got a bunch of drainage holes on the bottom. Uh, but I found that every other day I was at least spraying him or sitting him closer and closer and closer to the humidifier and leaving it on more for him. Uh, so I know he does like a lot of humidity. Uh, so what I wanted to try, I thought maybe a terrarium type thing could help him out some. So I got this little kind of fish bow at Walmart and uh, I want to put him inside there. Now I want to tell you a little bit of background information on this plant. They come from kind of southern Asia around Malaysia, Burma, Indonesia, South China, Northeast India. Um, so they're kind of around the tropical kind of rainforest areas uh, and they're found growing on the rainforest floor. So they don't get a whole lot of light in their natural environment. Uh, a lot of it, if they do get any at all, is very, very filtered light. Uh, and of course, being down there on the rainforest floor, it gets really humid. They get a little bit of light and uh, they do get a decent amount of water. Uh, but you can end up overwatering these, so you got to be very careful because they will get rhizome rot uh, that's just like root rot, and you'll have a problem and your plant will die. So, that being said, uh, their temperature requirements are just basically what you would like. If you're hot, your plant's gonna be hot. If you're cold, your plant's definitely gonna be cold. They really can't take any temperatures below 50 degrees and they will not survive a frost. So if you do have this guy out catching just a little bit of natural sunlight, uh, don't forget him when the fall comes around because he will die uh, and won't make it even through one night of uh, really cold uh, weather. Other than that, uh, they, the ASPCA does say that it is a non-toxic plant, both to pets and humans. So uh, you don't have to worry about any kind of uh, adverse reactions or anything. If you've got a little child or a dog or a cat that likes to chew on something, this is a safe plant to have. Um, light requirements are very low. Like I said, uh, the best place for this orchid in your home would probably be your bathroom. 
uh, in there, the fluorescent kind of lighting uh, with all the humidity from the showers and the sink uh, really will kind of help this plant out and really kind of just keep him thriving. Uh, I said you can put him in a north facing window, an east facing window would probably be a little bit better, uh, though you might want to kind of shade him with some curtains or blinds just to make sure he's not getting too much morning sunlight. Uh, but generally, you know, uh, bright kind of filtered morning sunlight is best and then protection from the sun during the hotter part of the day really kind of uh, is ideal for this plant. Uh, and as I said, uh, if you're kind of keeping them on a good watering schedule, you got to remember they're a little bit kind of a heavy drinker, uh, then you don't have to mist him a whole lot or give him a whole lot of uh, actual humidity uh, or use your humidifier or a pebble tray or anything like that. Uh, so if you find that you are missing a little bit, uh, you may want to water it just a little bit better. Uh, I always use my distilled water uh, and I will use it in the humidifier or if I spray or if I just go ahead and water them. Now this orchid really does kind of break all the rules for any kind of orchid out there. Um, the first one, they like, they're terrestrial, so uh, they're not empathetic. They do not grow in trees and their roots do not dangle in the air or wrap around trees. Uh, instead, they are at home in some kind of soil-like medium. Uh, so um, every other kind of orchid out there usually has the chip bark chips and the sphagnum moss and all kinds of uh, medium like that. Uh, but this guy really does kind of like soil. And then also they like more of a kind of shaded area as opposed to a brighter area that like your phalaenopsis and your vandas, uh, your paphylodidium, stuff like that, cattleyas. Uh, these guys like a lot less uh, light than those type of orchids do. So, and even with your phalaenopsis, uh, they don't need a whole lot of light, uh, natural light either. And this guy likes a little bit less than that. So, uh, and then finally, this guy has been made very popular from his showy foliage. Uh, instead of uh, the beautiful kind of showy flowers that any other orchid is known for, this guy's mainly known for his leaves. That is another way that this guy kind of falls backward on the rules, uh, but there you go. So now, after I've given you all this kind of valuable information, I just want to go ahead and show you how I will repot him and put him in his new kind of terrarium-like home to see if this will help him out a little bit more. <clears throat> So as always, kind of loosen up your root ball inside your pot. And as you can tell, I've got my natinix on top. So that's what all this white stuff is right there. And just kind of gently squeeze. You want to <clears throat> loosen up the soil around the root ball and uh, make sure that not a whole lot of rhizomes are kind of poking out of the bottom because you will break those. And these stems are very, very fragile. So be very careful because you will break them off even if you accidentally kind of knock it a little bit. And as always, I've got my little dusty little bucket down here to catch any kind of debris underneath me. So uh, you may want something like that or a trash can, uh, but just kind of take your fingers and just kind of gently kind of weave it through there and kind of hold him in as you dump him over and now this soil starts to come out. Now you gotta be very careful because uh, they like very kind of porous media, so sand, and a little bit of soil is ideal so the rhizomes will probably kind of fall apart a little bit uh, as you knock the soil back so just kind of be patient and don't really kind of rough him up a whole lot and all i'm doing is just kind of holding his leaves with one hand and then the other hand i've got it over the rhizomes and uh, I'm gently working my fingers through the soil to kind of knock it all off into this bucket down below. All right, now I don't want to do too much until I've made his new home ready for him. So I'm going to put him back in his little pot right here just to kind of hold uh, his rhizomes and his stems up. And now I'm going to go ahead and prepare his new home for him. Now, I said earlier, some kind of soil-like media. You don't really want a whole bunch of uh, general kind of all-purpose soil that you use for any other plant. I'm using this kind of indoor potting mix from miracle Grow. It's a soilless media that's kind of got uh, cocoa cool, uh sphagnum moss, peat moss, all kinds of stuff that won't attract aphids. Uh, so this guy, like I said, does like a lot of humidity and a lot of water. If you mix a whole bunch of soil 
down in there and you don't have a good amount of airflow in your room around this pot, you will end up attracting a bunch of aphids. This stuff right here is designed to kind of keep those at bay and not really attract that. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit down at the bottom just to kind of cover the bottom of the pot up. And just make a little divot down in the middle so that uh, the roots kind of have something to sit on. And as I said, you don't really need a very deep pot with these guys. They don't really get too tall. They just kind of mainly widen out a lot. So this, I figured, would kind of be best for him. Uh, it will hold a little bit more moisture in there. So I won't have to uh, spray him a whole bunch and use my humidifier every day uh, and now that I'm done with that Buddha's like are you calling me all right and I finished kind of loosening him up there and as you can tell I'm just kind of holding him with one hand and using the other hand to kind of knock off as much soil as I want without damaging the rhizomes and just be cautious and be aware you're gonna make a little bit of a mess but it's not really gardening unless you do all right now I find that he's a little bit too tall for this pot so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim with my freshly sanitized and sharpened pruning shears just gonna trim a little bit of the rhizomes back just to kind of make him a little bit shorter now, I'm not gonna do a whole bunch don't want to mess him up, but I can trim a little bit back just to kind of help hold the soil in. I'm going to lay some rocks down around here on the edge just for aesthetic purposes and like I said, just to kind of hold the soil more in place around the roots. And I think these are just the kind of river stones uh, that you would also get at Walmart or the dollar store. And just set them down in there don't throw them in there you will crack this glass this is very fragile glass very thin all right now what I'm doing now is kind of taking the soil and kind of scooting it more off the rocks and more towards the center where his rhizomes need a little bit of uh, covering up and then kind of tamping him down some just gently pressing around the rhizomes and the center to kind of get him anchored in there. And then push the rocks down a little bit to kind of help you out. And then adding in any more substrate that I kind of feel like may need to be in there. And if you feel like some's missing in the center, just kind of add it on top of the stems there and throw it down in the middle don't worry about covering the leaves up just kind of take your finger and knock it off the leaves and they'll be fine now as far as these kind of dried up looking leaves you can uh, take your sanitized pruning shears and just kind of cut them off as flush against the stem as you can without actually nicking the stem And then you can see some of these dried up flower stems. They will not ever turn uh, <coughs> green or into another flower, so just remove them and cut off anything that rather does look unsightly. Some of these leaves will kind of just pull off on their own, but don't pull too hard because you will break a stem or end up ripping a bunch of uh, holes into your plant and it would be better if I had <coughs> set this guy on my bonsai tray so I could uh, use it like a lazy Susan but hindsight is 2020 all right now I feel like he's in there pretty well so I'm just gonna kind of mash him down a little bit with my fingers don't push too hard uh, because these uh, stems and rhizomes are very fragile and you will break them 
So for my own sake, I'm going to add in a couple more rocks on this soil just so I could see it, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. And I will show you why in just a minute. Now a good way to know when it's time to repot your plant is if they do get top heavy. Uh, so putting a little bit of rocks in the bottom will kind of help you out uh, to make sure your plant doesn't get really top heavy in the future uh, and kind of stays more in its center of gravity. Uh, and then also you can tell if it's time to repot if your rhizomes are kind of poking out of the top of the uh, container or at the bottom. Uh, and if you squeeze it and it feels really tough and tight, uh, that means that it's really full inside and it needs a bigger home. So just kind of pay attention whenever you go to water, kind of pick him up and give him a little squeeze, nothing too tight or too hard. All right, I think that's enough rocks and some sediment or soil in there rather. So I will go ahead and commence my next step after tamping down some more. And for the last final step, I'm going to use some orchid moss, which is just your uh, sphagnum moss, long grain here. Uh, but you can use the shorter ones. And just kind of rip some out. And this is, you know, just for choice. I don't really want to look in there and see a whole bunch of dirt all the time. So I'm just going to add in some sphagnum moss to kind of help conceal all that. So I know you're probably saying, well, the rocks were kind of pointless, but uh, it will kind of hold the plant in there better and make sure that your container won't get top heavy. And again, your sphagnum moss is going to serve more than one purpose. Not just really there to kind of hide <clears throat> the soil and the rhizomes, but to also hold moisture in as well uh, because these guys are pretty heavy drinkers and they do love humidity so this will help you out in more than one way all right i'd say that's about good enough i may end up adding some more in there as time goes on or i may take some out uh, so i will go ahead and add a little bit of distilled water just to kind of watering down a little bit uh, and it will help the moss and just like I did with the soil, I will tamp this down. And then as it gets wet, it'll kind of break down a little bit and resemble more of the moss that you would see kind of like in a terrarium and not be as balled up. And then from the side, you can still see most of the rocks. So uh, I may make some changes over time, uh, but I will definitely do another update video on this and show you how this has worked out. Uh, for my orchid, I kind of want him to get a little bit more bushier. Uh, he does look kind of sad right now. So, all right, now our new potted plant friend feels more at home uh, and looks a lot better in this container. Uh, so as I said, uh, if you're watering them regularly, you don't have to gonna give them a whole bunch of humidity, though they do like a good amount of humidity, so don't cancel that out and don't forget about it. Uh, but just be careful because you will kind of develop a rhizome rot. Uh, and then your plant will die. So just kind of give it a couple days if you think you may have watered it too soon. Uh, it's better to err on the side of caution and uh, make sure you don't overdo something. Too much of a good thing is always a bad thing. So uh, other than that, uh, the only kind of pest you have to worry about for is a couple of them. Uh, millibugs, aphids, uh, spider mites, uh, thrips. Uh, then you have to worry about rhizome rot some powdery mildew, and some fungus. So again, uh, if you are giving your plants a lot of humidity and a lot of water, uh, even the ones that are off to the side that aren't getting a whole bunch of it, you always wanna kinda turn a fan on when you can. Uh, too much water and humidity with no air movement or airflow is a perfect recipe for fungi, rot, disease, and pest to come in there. So if you've got a whole bunch of water or humidity in the air, or if it's raining outside, 
do your plants a favor and turn a fan on and kind of get some air movement in there at least until most of the water kind of evaporates or isn't really kind of just hanging around your plants and on the leaves uh, because you can get some stem rot uh, and then invite any kind of pest in there so just err on the side of caution and make sure you do turn a fan on uh, that will probably help you out in the long run uh, but you got to be careful because some of the more sensitive plants like your orchids can dry out relatively fast so uh, just kind of it's a double-edged sword just kind of pay attention all right guys well that's all i really wanted to say about this plant uh let me know if you've ever had a, any kind of uh, success or failures with these guys uh because obviously i was doing something wrong and that's okay to kind of admit uh and try something different like i said i will do an update video on this plant to kind of show you if this idea worked or if it was some kind of miserable failure until then guys leave me a comment uh and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done that and give me a thumbs up and a like and as I said earlier, please feel free to share my videos with anybody else that you think may enjoy them. Until next time, guys, don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.